This week has seen the outbreak of a huge debate over welfare reform, what the government has uh, recently implemented in terms of changes in benefits, and whether that's right or not. Now, the key thing to remember is that the welfare state in the UK for uh, working age people is pretty large. We're talking about um, well, close to £100 billion a year spent on working age benefits. To put that in perspective, that's around the same size of the entire GDP of New Zealand. Now, with such a large welfare state, it's completely right that the government looks at whether we're delivering the kind of outcomes we want to, employment, better living standards, support for those who can't look after themselves, and whether we're doing that in the most cost-efficient uh, cost and, and effective way. Now, what I think the government's reforms have been about are delivering those things. It's also about trying to uh, win the debate around the support that um, the public have for welfare reform. In the past 10, 20 years, we've seen the welfare state expand quite dramatically, well up the income distribution with tax credits, which have been supporting low-income work, um, as well as families earning up to 50 or 60,000 pounds a year. And I think what we've seen in, in the public response to that is that people don't necessarily agree that that's the right uh, use of, of taxpayers' money. And that's led to support for the welfare state, state being undermined and um, people not uh, really appreciating what it actually delivers. Now what policy exchange want to see is that support for the welfare state is rebuilt, that we appreciate the real value of having a, a system which supports the vulnerable, which helps people back to work, which in some, some circumstances, you know, this is a lifeline for people with a disability where they can't work with you know, children where they're having a temporary problem. You know, it's, it's, it's essential that that continues. But also that we are making sure that everyone goes back to work where they can and are given the right kind of support to make sure that once they are in work, they try to increase their hours, increase their earnings and move themselves as far away from state support and the need to align on, st on state top-ups to their incomes as possible. Now we think that the reforms that the government have put in place in the last two or three years and also the reforms coming in in terms of universal credit from this month, we think those are a step in the right direction. But on top of that we're arguing that we need much more. It's about increasing the requirements that we are putting on claimants in terms of making sure they're seeking work, making sure they're looking for those extra hours, those extra jobs, so they can really start to provide for themselves. On the other side of things, we'd like to see the support that the government gives them increase too. So that's about reform to Job Centre Plus to make sure it is really providing an effective service to people who are struggling to find work at the moment. And also reform to the work programme, which helps the long-term unemployed to find work, to make sure that providers are uh, really incentivised to help people back into work and to progress their uh, earnings and pay. On top of those things, we just think it is essential that the contributory principle in welfare, that is, that we have a, a system which um, is something for something, is reintroduced in the welfare state. Together we think that increasing requirements, um, improving the support and reintroducing the contributory principle will rebuild um, the support and trust the public has in the welfare state but also deliver better outcomes for claimants and, and people across society, as, as well as saving the government money. And we think that those th uh, three things together can really improve the welfare state.